Hey, what's up guys? It's Sonial here with the Keeper's Corner. And with a new week, new day, we have found ourselves with a new campaign. The new special campaign for today is going to be a Mason's campaign, which means there will be crafting rewards throughout it. And it is only suiting that this is the Rise of the Machines. The Rise of the Machines is a little bit different than what we've been having the last couple days. Instead of using a specialized hero, we will have access to our tower machines in this campaign. So, if you've been following my videos, unfortunately that means we're going to be a little weak in that territory. We don't have bombards and things like that crafted. However, a lot of these early missions you can get through pretty easily with one of these epic walls. I went ahead and just made a brand new uh, suit of arms here. He came in at level 50 which is a pretty decent starting level for him. I know a lot of you guys might have ones that are a little bit weaker, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and put the knight in front. We're going to put the suit of arms on the wing here, the cleric, and the shaman. This is going to be mostly similar to our late game PvE uh, builds that are using the double healer setup with the shaman and stacking inspiration. We're going to throw our suit of arms here on the top wing because his initiative and his cooldowns are a little bit slower than the knight. That means he's going to typically throw up his taunt second. Anything that would be hitting the knight at that point in the back row is going to hit the suit of arms instead, which alleviates the healing needed from the cleric. She can focus on the shaman. Yada, yada, yada. Otherwise, this campaign isn't too difficult uh, if you choose the right machine. If you're trying to do this with just three heroes and no machine, um, you might have some difficulty. I, as I said, don't have any bombards to experiment, experiment with, and I didn't test and see if you could put multiple machines. So if you're one of those people that has a ton of bombards, I would love to see how three bombards and a knight or something like that would perform so if you want to do some experimenting with different machines, and if you find something that works better, definitely comment, let me know, and uh, I'll go ahead and try it out, and if it's worth it, I'll make a video on those builds as well. But as I said, this is another Mason-themed campaign, so for this final stage completion here, you do get a Void Core and a couple Celestial Orbs. For that reason, I definitely advise trying to complete this one here on Extreme if you can. But as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. It's very, very similar to the regular Mason's Extreme, although it's just taking one of your hero slots away. Double tanks in a lot of situations is going to be almost just as good as double healers because it does lessen the amount of healing you need on your core guys. By the end of this battle, the suit of arms might die. Fortunately, you can revive him. So if he goes down, you can absolutely resurrect him. The uh, epic walls, although they can't be healed, they can be resurrected, and they should be able to be targeted with uh, abilities like Cleanse, and possibly even Invigor, since those aren't technically heals. Maybe just Cleanse, actually. I don't know if Invigor will work. But if you put an Epic Wall in front with your Cleric, you can bring it back repeatedly. And uh, most of these stages, so long as whatever you put behind it isn't too weak, the Epic Wall will make it through the whole way pretty easily. But as I've said before, the key to success in any of these PvE campaigns that are getting a little tough is using the Knight, the Paladin, or a combo of the Paladin of the Paladin and the Warmaster, and just stacking up these buffs. Uh, personal favorite for me is Inspiration, of course, because of the attack bonus. However, a lot of people do like to use the Paladin because of his defense gains, and the Warmaster because of his cooldown reduction, damage bonus, and defense gain. I mean, ultimately, of course, the Warmaster is probably the best support hero in the game for those reasons. But again, if you've been following my guides, you should have at least a Shaman, Cleric, and Knight that are fairly powerful at this point. So even with a Shell of Protection, Katana build on your Knight, and a Fist of the Dark one on your Shaman, this shouldn't really be an issue. As you can see, I'm still running Powerful Heal in place of Righteous from our last video. I did mean to switch that back, so definitely probably want to run Righteous Call on this one for the Soul Energy gain in case you end up needing to use any revives. Otherwise, it's not too intensive on Soul Cost because we're not using our Archmage or our fourth hero here who's going to be using a lot of Soul Skills.
And the nice thing about using this suit of arms up here on the wing is when the knight's taunt wears off, a lot of times the suit of arms is going to be ready to put up a new one. And he's going to soak up those lightning bolts and frost bolts and things like that. Keep them away from our cleric and our shaman. And like I said, help alleviate those healing needs from the cleric. And you do have to watch out for poison from the demonic watchers or big eyeball guys, whatever you want to call them, on your Kniggit. The Kniggit is, of course, very, very weak to poison. Uh, some poison effects more than others. But that is, of course, why we use the perfect katana on him for that little bit of an extra boost to our poison resistance there. And as you see, the suit of arms has thrown his taunt up now to soak up those lightning bolts and things. And again, like I said, it might serve well to put a Bombard or some other DPS in that top slot. I did a couple run runs with a Runic Construct. Uh, I wanted to test how well Overload and Inspiration stacked together, and it really didn't seem to be worth it. So I would definitely go with it, just a suit of arms for now, and uh, let him tank that wing like you see here. With that set up, it's a pretty straightforward stage here on Extreme to get you that Void Core for today. Now also keep in mind we're into a new reset here, so if you have been following my videos, I do want to emphasize the value of those tower attacks. I see more and more people that are picking up and doing more tower attacks, but keep in mind, hero battles are not the only source of big prestige counts. If you're trying to get into that great 1% guild, or you're trying to help your current guild out, tower battles are a great place to earn extra prestige. In addition to that, in higher tower battles from I'd say 35 on you're gonna be getting over a thousand gold and two to three loot drops in every tower battle so nine times out of ten that's gonna trump any rewards available to you in PvE content even during a lot of the special campaigns and whatnot so you see here this is a 74 power tower and it's gonna give me 1.4k gold just about before my tithe boost as well as two random loot drops so definitely make sure you're burning as many of your tower attacks as possible. If you're a fully free player, I do advise that you still keep dumping your adds into gems. But if you're buying some gems here and there, using re gem refreshes on tower attacks is super efficient. Uh, much more so than using gems on food or hero battle refreshes. And using adds to speed up that incredibly long tower attack timer can also be really gem efficient. I find that... Uh, Speeding up heroic missions and tower attacks are probably the two biggest gem values that you get out of watching ads. For instance, on a 16 or 24 hour heroic mission, a lot of times watching an ad can drop the gem cost of a refresh by 6 to 8 or 9 gems compared to the 3 gems that you get for watching an ad. So if you're going to be spending refreshes on those things anyways, it's definitely advisable to dump your gems into speeding up the refresh as opposed to watching ads to get fewer gems and then spend those gems anyways but that's the rise of the machines on extreme for you there guys if you have any questions feel free to drop them in the comments section subscribe like this video all that good stuff and we will catch you with the next one when the newest campaign comes up probably when this one ends in about a day and a half here we did cover the Golden Horde Extreme with the Gold Boosters in another video there. Keep in mind you only have about 17 hours left on the Skilled Adept event. So if you've got skill scroll skill points left, make sure to use those up. I'm pretty sure the next event coming up will be a scroll event, although don't quote me on that. But definitely start stacking up and getting those scrolls ready. Keep in mind the cost to use all your scrolls will get through the roof if you hang on to too many of them. We are up to 161,000 here. So definitely start saving some gold as well. Alright guys, I'll catch you later.